a second to check out my Patreon page guys, your support is really appreciated. Enjoy the tutorial. Um, welcome to my new set of uh, tutorials, this is going to be more of like a let's code kind of thing, so it's going to be slightly less like a tutorial um, and more of like a project that will ultimately end up becoming some sort of mini game. Um, that would be pretty cool, but you'll get to like use a whole lot of stuff that I've taught in the past in my other tutorials, and generally it's just uh, it's a bit of a laugh really. Um, so it's not going to be the most amazing game because obviously I'm trying to fit in as many of the features that I've done in the tutorials to then ultimately put something together. So what we're going to do is we're going to be building this game called Star Blaster. Um, I just kind of randomly thought of it. It's going to be um, it's going to give you the idea of how you can randomly create. Um, images on the screen that you can then hit to then score points, uh, there'll be timers, there'll be uh, scores for local um, just so your phone remembers what your latest score was and then there'll also be uh, a chance to upload to a database externally as I showed in the 13th of the Windows Phone 8 tutorials. So what I've actually done is I've kind of put together three image uh, files. The first one is the background um, then we have the little logo-y thing I made here, and then the third one is the actual star itself. So as you can see over here, um, I've literally just created a, a, um, an application. I've called it Star Blaster, and I've only really just added a folder um, over here in the Solution Explorer, and I've just added one called Images, and just thrown the three images in there. Now, if you want to get your hands on the, uh, the images, then I will add a link in the description for the RAW file, which will have just three pictures in it for you. Now, it's not really necessary that you get them. You can just use your own images, but if you you know can't be bothered to go find them, then go ahead and use my images that I put together. I mean, they're, they're pretty basic. Um, so what I've done to start with is I've kind of built part of the app already so that these, tutor uh, so that these videos aren't as long um, and there's not as much um, actual coding and then you having to pause and write it out. Kind of. I'm just going to go through what I've done. Um, so basically, the first thing I've done is I've created the application. Um, I've removed the system tray, as I always do, because I just hate it. I really don't like it. Um, and then I've just clicked on the background here on the grid. Um, and if you just go over here to the properties in the brush, then I've just changed the background to the background.png, which is in the zip file, in the RAW file. Um, then I've added a text, blo uh, text box here which is going to be the username text box. I've added a play button and I've added a high scores button. Now at the moment, um, the only things that I've implemented so far, so on the um, username box, we're using the tap event. Now this tap event is it, it, what I've actually done to start with to make it a little neater for people who are using the application is I've actually written in enter a username so that it, you're instantly, you know, you don't come on the app and think, what am I doing? Well, you've got to enter a name. So I've added this little tap in here, and what this tap goes to is this little bit here, which says if the uh, username box text is equal to enter a username, and when they've tapped on it, then it will automatically just change the text to be nothing. So that's the first part, just so that they don't click on it and have to remove the text themselves, because I really hate it when people do that, and I've just really winds me up. So that's nice and simple. It doesn't take a lot to do. So it wouldn't hurt. Um, then we'll put that in to start with. Uh, then on the play button, um, this has got the click event. Now in here, we have a couple things going on. In fact, first of all, I'll mention this. I I've installed the theme manager. Um, if you want to do that, you just right click here on your Star Blaster um, solution or whatever you've called it. If you manage these packages here, you'll then be able to search online. If you just type in the theme manager, then it will load up um, this one here, which is the Windows Phone theme manager. If you just go ahead and install that, which you can see I've already done, um, it basically allows you to force the app to be as if it's in a certain theme. So I always force it to be a dark theme um, and I can force its color that it's gonna use. So if you've got the red color on your phone and you open this app up, it will get overwritten with the mango. Um, I do this because I don't, you know, I don't like the idea of people having different colours in the app. If if you've got an app that's like predominantly based around, you know, like a mango colour, and someone's got a red theme on, it might look a bit stupid when they're clicking on boxes and red outlines are coming up and things like that. Um, and also, I force it to dark theme because when you're developing in here, whenever you put down something such as these bo these username boxes or these buttons, it's all being put down as if you're in um, the dark theme. 
and when you change over to light theme some things like naturally change color and the username boxes become a pain in the arse and it's just trust me it's much easier if you just force it into a dark theme um, but again totally up to you um, then what I've got here then is the play button click so the first thing that happens in here is I've set a bool here right and I've got acceptable name and what I'm doing is I'm checking if the um, I'm checking if the username that was entered into our username box is considered an acceptable name. Now, what I consider to be acceptable is anything that isn't blank, um, because otherwise you can just have like false usernames sent through, and especially if we're working with databases, we want to make sure that a username is actually getting sent, because if it isn't, it could cause trouble in the database um, when you try to look up by someone's username and there's not a username there. And some people get around it by making sure the length of the text, bo uh, text box is more than one but the problem with that is a space counts as a character so the best thing to do is what I'm going to show you here so first thing it will do is it will check this and this is either going to be yes or no so the event that it's going to actually call here is the check username which is something that I've written here myself um, and it will result in either true or false and the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to be passed as a st we're going to pass our string obviously and inside here it's going to be referred to as username even though it's the username text uh, username box dot text um, then we've got uh, another little one here just a little local value of result which we're going to naturally say is false so providing it doesn't meet this if statement it's going to result in a false statement coming back which means that our um, acceptable name isn't going to be true and it's going to tell them that they must enter a username so what it does is it gets the name that we've passed through and first of all it checks if it's a letter or a digit so just generally it what it's saying is it a letter or a digit so if it meets that criteria it then goes on to say and that the username any is a letter so we want to make sure that it's actually a letter not a digit um, so once we've said is it actually a letter so if someone enters for example 10 um, it's gonna say is it a digit or a letter yes it is um, is it a letter? Well, no, it's not. It's not unless there's other ones uh, letters in there. Because when it says any, any of the characters that are in there, are any of them a letter? Now, if someone's just entered a number, obviously that's going to strike false, and that's going to become, you know, it's not going to complete the if statement, and we're not going to ultimately end up turning true. Um, after we've got um, is a letter, we've then got another one which says that and it's not equal to this string here. So we want to make sure that they haven't just opened the app up and clicked play straight away because our bit of text in there, which was enter a username, is basically then going to say if it doesn't say enter a username and it's met these previous two bits here, then we're going to get the result set to true. Otherwise, it's going to remain as false. Um, and when we come back up here, our acceptable name at that point will be true or false. If it's true, we'll get a message box um, pop up that says OK. And if it's false, then it will tell us that we've got a bad username. Now obviously this isn't what's going to ultimately happen um, because I'm doing this video by video. I'm going to write the code out, explain exactly how it works and then we'll, I'll remove such as this message box and this will change to navigating to the actual game page. Um, and other than that, that's, that's all that's in this app at the moment. So if we just run the emulator, I'll show you exactly what it does. Okay, so as we can see, our, um, our little system tray is gone, thank God. Um, and now we just are shown our little um, main page that we made. Um, if I click straight onto this username box, it's gone blank. And if I try to continue the game without entering a name and click play, it says that I must enter a username. And if I try to take the shortcut that other people use, where you press the space bar and press play, it's going to say that I must enter a username. Now, here's something that um, you must bear in mind. When we change to the theme color, when you click on this box, you can now see there's mango around it. Now we know that this emulator when I started it up was in blue, so it's gone mango on here and uh, when you click down on a button, the mango uh, colour will appear on the back of the button as well. But the one thing that doesn't change is the message boxes. Now the message box will always revert back to being the dark or the light theme depending on what the phone's set in and whatever its colour is. So as you can see this phone's already in dark theme anyway, but if I click on the OK it's gone blue. So that's the only thing that won't change when it comes to doing your application this way. Um, but yeah, so if we then go ahead and type in some numbers here and click play, 
we're not going to get through. So it actually has to be some sort of text. I mean, okay, yeah, it could just be A, and that's going to get us through. But what you can then do if you really want to um, is put an extra condition in to say, is the length more than three characters? So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that just now. So if we stop this, and uh, when we're doing our username check, if we do another one, we'll put it just after, just before the um, just before it checks if it's got our default data in there, and we'll just do um, so. We'll do another not, and we'll say username length is should we say less than three? That that'll probably be you know three or more characters is where it's generally going to have to be. So now if we save this and run the emulator. Wait, hang on, that's my fault. I've just said if it's less than three. No, oh, wait, not less than three. Oh, sorry, it's, it's early. I'm not really paying attention. Um, so if we go ahead and click play, we must enter a username. If I enter A, I must enter a username. So the only thing we're going to find there is as we add them on, it's, keep, it's going to keep telling us to enter a username until it's at least three characters. So all you're going to have to do then is just change your box down here to say you must enter a username more than... No, that, that is at least three or more characters. So it's all about kind of alerting your um, user so they know exactly what's going on. Because in that situation there, they'd have been, you know, entering their name because, you know, their name might be Joe and they might be lazy and not put an E on the end of it. Um, and they're going to want to know that your username, you must enter a username that is at least three or more characters. So by the time you then put the E on the end of it, we're going to get the exception here and we're going to be able to play our game. So that's it for the first um, Let's Code uh, video on this. Um, I will be releasing these um, as frequently as I can and ultimately we will build a nice little game where we can see stars randomly appearing in the sky and we have to basically tap on them to smash them and each one that you smash you'll gain points and maybe we'll make it so that if you miss one, you, know, you lose a point or something. Um, ultimately we'll be able to see the local high score to see what the high score the device has been made and then we'll also have a high score page to display everybody else's that will be in the database so that's the end of this one guys don't forget to subscribe you know follow me on twitter check out my patreon page um, and i guess i'll see you in the next one